Okay, today is Tuesday, November the 21st. Yeah. Um, Tuesday before Thanksgiving. So, what I'm doing is I'm preparing a gumbo for tonight. We'll eat just all day tomorrow. And then Thursday we have Thanksgiving dinner. So, here I have, I think it's probably about five, maybe six um, boneless chicken thighs that I'm going to make a broth with. All I'm just going to do is just boil it down. I'm not going to even add any salt or anything because what I'm using is going to have a little salt to it, to it. And also the broth I make for my baked chicken. So I'm putting that to boil. And I'm putting the top of it which makes it cook faster. Then here I have my dry shrimp. I have two one ounce packages that I'm boiling. Kind of slow though on a, in this little skillet here. I'm boiling that to get that broth off of that also. And to make those shrimp not be so... Um, they're dry, so they're kind of hard. So that's gonna soften them up also. Gumbo, I have some beef little smokies. I have uh, 24 ounces of those. This is some chicken broth that I make from my baked chicken. I have some bay leaves. I'm gonna use some of these and the rest of them I'm gonna put in a little um, quart size bag. I have celery, green onion. I also have white onion and garlic. I'll get that out. I have snow crab clusters. This gives your gumbo a real good flavor. They need to be clean. All it right there needs to come out. I have some shrimp here. The 3140, the Tony Shashray is like 31 to 40 of those per pound. And I have a dry shrimp. And then really make a lot of good um broth. So I'm just gonna take these and kind of bake them. I put just a little rotisserie seasoning and a little garlic salt on them, and that's it. Like I said, because you have a lot of flavor with the... Oh, I didn't show y'all. Hold on a second. Uh, base I'm using this time is called Ma'am Pawpaws. I call them Mama Pawpaws. And it's New Orleans style. Really, really, really good. I've used the Zatarans. Zatarans is good. It has a tendency to be a little... um With the dehydrated vegetables and stuff. It has a tendency to be a little gritty to me. But this one here is really, really, really good. And you only need this one box here. It goes a long way if you're going to use your own seasoning. And then I'm going to actually make a roux um, for this. And that kind of like stretches this or whatever. I know how to make it from scratch. I just find ways to shorten it. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, so as it all comes together, I'll come back and show you. Basically do with just about everything I cook. It start off with my Trinity. But here I have um, bell pepper. I have a whole bell pepper. I have about a half of a stalk of celery. I have uh, a whole, well, yeah, a whole um, little stalk of uh, green onion that you buy in the store. And I have about five toes of garlic. I think garlic is a key ingredient in a good gumbo. So we're gonna stir this up. I've added a little salt and pepper because I season in layers. Not a lot though, just a little. And um, to this, we're going to add our sausage. And when I make a gumbo, I usually use two types of sausage. Here I have the Hillshire Farm beef sausage. The um, party cocktails. I put those in there. I'm making a big thing because today we're going to have this for dinner. And then tomorrow, it, it'll be our lunch. Or, well, it'll be our dinner to, for two days. And then we'll have our Thanksgiving dinner. So, I have those sausage cut up. And now, I mean, I'm sorry, in there. And now I have to cut some of the mandas. This is a four-pound thing I get from Sam's. And I'm going to use about... Hmm, this, here, this here is a pound and a half of these cocktail smokies. And I'm going to also add maybe about a pound and a half of the... Mandas that I'm going to actually cue, and I'll be back to show you when I add those. The manda sausages. I'm making a large pot of gumbo this time, so it's going to seem like a lot. Well, it is a lot. A lot of seasonings. A lot of meat, a lot of sausage. I didn't buy that much of crabs. My family don't really eat a lot of them, but I love the flavor that it gives you gumbo. It's a very good flavor. So we're just gonna stir this up and let it simmer. 
We have our chicken breast bacon. We have our chicken thighs. Boiling for a broth. Boneless chicken thighs and boneless breast. I don't like fat and I don't like bones in my gumbo. Everybody have their own way of cooking it. You may like, like a lot of my sisters, um, they like to make theirs with, um, with the wings. I don't like the wings, so to me, when you put it in your gumbo, that skin is tough, and you got that skin, and you have bones. In my gumbo, you can eat everything on your plate, except the bay leaves, because <laughs> I don't pick them out, but you're able to eat everything, so... Anyway, so we're going to let this simmer, and then this is going to cook down, but this is going to simmer um, for a minute. Then, I usually add my dry shrimp here, but since I boiled them this time, I'm not going to add them to this. I'll just add them to the pot, and when that um, chicken breast get done and the thighs get done, I cut them up. I'm going to transfer all this into a larger stock pot and then I'll add the uh, the ball shrimp, bay leaves, then I'll add that gumbo base and then I'll start making my roux to go in there. So this is what it looks like now. This is just the vegetables and the salt, the vegetables are sauteed and I add the um, sausage to it and now it's just going to cook. I'll be back. I clean my snow crab. This is a uh, no crab clusters I got from Kroger. You see it? They're um, $9.99 a pound and I've got six dollars fifty nine cents. I don't have to have like, a whole lot of my gumbo, but I do like it in there. The flavor. See all that black on there? I'm gonna go in and get that out. I don't wanna cook that like let's try to clean it out now let It black right there. I'll try to go in and get that off of there. A lot of flavor yet you're going to be using. You don't have to use a whole lot. See the inside, that little meaty part there. You know, see that? Get that off there. Any green part or brown or part, the meaty part here, I can take that off. That looks better for me. Not a real big deal for some people, but I just like to clean it off. If I had a brand new thing, I'd scrub the claws. I don't have a brand new spoon. But they look okay. So we're going to go with that. The meaty part, like it's something a little green right there, I pull it off. I want it to be white through there, so this is what it looks like. All right, room for my gumbo, and I do my different. I do make it with the oil sometimes, but I don't want all the grease because I got the grease in the sausage. So what I do, I've added mine to the cast iron skillet. But all I'm doing is stirring it. I'm getting ready to take the chicken breast out. I brown mine in the oven. So I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's finished. And I'm also going to come back and show you when I mix all of my ingredients for the gumbo together. Okay? I'm going to turn the sausage off. And remember when I was telling you I didn't want to put any um, grease in my roux. But see, this is the broth that's made from the sausage. I am going to add that, but you know sausage are greasy. 
you don't see a lot of grease there, but when you get through mixing it all, you may have to skim some of that grease. And what I did is I bought me a uh, grease fat separator. A little two cup thing where I can pull some of that broth off and strain the grease out. But anyway, this is done. I'm going to stop this cooking process. And um, here are my chicken thighs. Now what I did, I had some more in the freezer because that wasn't going to be enough. So here is the broth. I'm going to take the thighs out. Uh, they already did bone because they're boneless, skinless. And then I'm going to let them sit for about 15 minutes. And I'm going to cut them up into my chunks. And then we're going to cut the chicken breast up. And we'll get ready to combine everything. So I'll show you that step when I get to it. And the broth from the thighs. frozen broth and what this is going to do well, let's get the grease off but what this is going to do it's going to bring that heat down because we want to uh, bring the heat down so when we add the gumbo base it won't get uh, is it? that's not it hold one moment okay so this is going to bring our temperature down So at this time, let's see if I can bring y'all in. Here you go. I'm going to open the pack. And what I'm using is the Ma'am Pawpaws. See if it'll focus. Gumbo. Mix. I don't know why it's not focusing, y'all. Okay, so anyway, before the temperature go back up, I'm going to add this because when you add stuff like this and your temperature is too hot, all it do is it does is kind of take stuff like this. So I'm going to add this now. So I'm stirring it in. And I'm going to add also add a root to it. I have some bay leaves. Okay. So, we're probably going to need some more broth, but we'll see. So, now we're going to add our sausage and our vegetables. And I don't want it to splatter. So I'm going to drop it in there as low as I can and add it. So it won't splatter too bad. We have that. So now we're going to add our, our dry shrimp that have been sitting in that boil water. So it kind of caused them to um, get a little thicker. Not as flat as dry shrimp are. Or as hard. So we've added that. Now we're going to add our meat. And what I've done, I've taken that thigh apart and gotten all that fat and all that out of there I just pull it apart with my hand and so I'm just going to start dropping that in and god this is going to be a lot of gumbo but I like it meaty I don't want a lot of broth and not a lot of meat so it's plenty I didn't think I had enough meat but once I started uh, tearing those thighs apart, I was like, wow, that's a lot of meat. So, we're fine. We're fine. So, 
So the only thing now I have to add is my fresh shrimp, which I'm going to add a little later. And my crabs, which I'm going to add a little later also. I just let this cook for a while. So my fresh crab and dry shrimp, I'll add a little later. So we have everything in there. And we don't have our roux. My roux is actually still in the oven. And if you can look at this, you can see there's some grease on the top, like I told you it would be. Look how meaty that is. Okay, so we're going to just let this simmer. Then I'll come back and show you when I start adding my other ingredients to it. don't have very much, just my seafood. That's it. So if you're looking and you're the one that's hosting an event and you want to do some southern comfort food, you can do a gumbo like this. It's easy. Um, you could do your roof from scratch and then, you know, add your stuff. But this is going to be good. It's simple. It's quick. You're adding your different things. You're flavoring in layers. And it's good and flavorful. So I'll be back. I want to show y'all something. This is a grease separator. See it, that right there? All that is the grease. And that grease comes from out the sauces. So I, that's why I didn't want to add any grease to my gumbo by making a roux with grease. That's why I have the flour in the oven. And this little thing, when I pour this off, it's going to grab that from the top. Let's see if I can show y'all what I'm talking about. So what's supposed to happen is, I'll, well, this too full. I see already this too full. Hold on. The, the liquid is going back in the pot. The grease is going to be at the top. See? Now, if I pour any more, I'm going to get the grease. But all that's the grease left. I'm going to dump that out. I got in my um, cast iron skillet and it's bent. See? It's made with the flour. Just put it in the flour. I think you probably cooked on it about... I had it on 375, probably for about 30 to 40 minutes maybe. I've been stirring it. So this is about how dark I want it. I did strain some of the grease. I'm probably going to strain it again after I put the roux in there. So I'm going to start adding some to it. Give me a dry spoon here. I just start putting it in there. Off the top. Put it in with one spoon and stir it down with another one. See the color changes instantly, doesn't it? Okay. And I'm gonna skim that grease off the top. I just put it in a little thin layer and add it. You add too much at one time, you're gonna end up with like a lot of lumps. But this is so thin, if I have a lump, it's gonna cook out. That's why I just add a little layer at a time. And I'm using a, dry, a spoon that's contained this that's dry to add that to it. I just don't want to do a lot of grease. Thin layer over the top. Now, if you want, you can add you some chicken broth to this and just drop it in there like a paste, you know, like you would do if you'd be making um, a gravy. I just do this this way. Okay, I'm going to keep on until I get the desired thickness that I want. So you don't see a whole bunch of lumps of uh, in there. And like I said, if it's going to be a lump, it's going to cook out because that's why I put like just like a thin layer. I'm probably going to be using all of this flour because this is a lot, a lot. I'll be back. 